Hi everyone, and welcome to this presentation on driving word of mouth and account expansion. This is actually a recording of the live workshop that uh, we that took place this October during Product Drive. But I'm sorry you missed it, and I hope this is going to be relevant for you. And please feel free to reach out to us in case you have any questions. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen first. Okay. And then we'll go through a short presentation. And uh, after we define some uh, common terms, we're actually going to go into user pilot platform, which is a product adoption tool. And we're going to build some in-app messaging and uh, show you how you can actually use uh, the tool and drive word of mouth and account expression. So let's begin. OK, so you're obviously here for driving word of mouth and account expansion. And uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Adina, and I'm a product marketing manager at UserPilot. And my goal for today is pretty much to help you learn how to use the user journey, milestones, segmentation, and other important elements to actually drive account expansion at word of mouth. You're going to learn out how to do that, and obviously how to use it, to, how to do it with in-app messaging and guidance tool, of course, UserPilot. So our agenda for today, in short, we're going to talk about milestones and their role, mapping the user journey the right way, and how to use milestones to do that. My presentation just skipped. There was a step before this segmentation and segmentation. As I mentioned, this is very important. And then we're going to move on to the part where actually build these experiences using user pilot. OK. My computer is kind of slow. Okay, there might be some delays here. I'm sorry and apologize for that. Okay, before we start, let's go ahead and talk about what expansion and word of mouth is. You see a lot of uh, images here. These are actually uh, expansion messages from known tools. You might recognize some, but ex account expansion is actually the revenue growth generated through upsells, cross sells, and add ons, right? Uh, you have the example of Slack here. Uh, where they send you a message to, where they limit your view history to 10,000 messages, and then they prompt you to upgrade, or Asana, who prompts you to try a new, to start a new trial if you want to try a paid feature, like this is for uh, freemium accounts. One thing I want to mention here, account expansion is not necessarily making a user upgrade from plan A to plan B, like spend more money, it's also making free users actually upgrade and use uh, a paid plan. Right. Also, of course, we have Zapier here telling you that uh, you need to upgrade in order to do that. We're later on going to see what all these messages have in common and why I put them here, because they have a purpose. <laughs> but before that, what is word of mouth? Because word of mouth and account expansion pretty much refer to the same user journey stage. You probably know this. We're going to target the same user journey stage. This is a kind of a spoiler alert here. So. Uh, word of mouth is actually what people say about you voluntarily. And I want to stress the word voluntarily here because this is not the same as paid ads or talking to an influencer to recommend your product or say your product is awesome. That's paid advertising. And depending on who this influencer is and if they actually try your product, you might be spending your money in vain. So you should focus on driving word of mouth that's real, that's actually relevant for your users, and that's voluntarily. You can use, of course, incentives to make people do this, but it doesn't mean you're going to force their words. Okay, so what do milestones, user journey, and everything have in common with uh, account expansion of word of mouth, right? I want to ask you this. When do user hit the upgrade or leave a review button? It's actually when you tell them what's in it for them, right? You, when you actually answer these questions and when it makes sense for them, right? And how does this what's in it for me question translates into pretty much user's word? Uh, this actually translates into value. So when you tell them what's the value for them in doing something, right? Let's check this uh, Loom message, for example, which tells me that my workspace has been downgraded. I've been on a, a premium trial, right? But what they point out is the, uh, what I'm going to lose if I don't upgrade, if I continue to use the free plan instead of the paid plan, right? So they stress what's in it for me. Again, here's an example of something that uh, we're going to build similar, uh, uh, something similar today. 
it's a in-app model asking for at a specific time for a user to leave a review. But then again, it gives them something in exchange because as you notice, if you ask for a review on Captera or G2 or some important website that requires some time from the user to do it, you need to provide something in exchange, right? Not a, everything is free in today's world and time values money. So what this message is having come, because it's not just value, it's pretty much the right message at the right time with the, at the right user, right? They are contextual pretty much. Them, they are telling me something at the moment that it's relevant for me. And how do we actually achieve this contextual contextuality, right? How do we deliver value in a contextual way? And here is what milestone journey and segmentation come into place because pretty much what milestones will tell us when it's time to send the message. The journey, it, it tells us where the user is, like what they interacted. Should the model be okay or do I need to use a, um, email maybe or a different communication channel is the right time to send a message pretty much this is what's telling us and segmentation is going to tell me who this user is okay one second sorry ah this is going crazy okay so let's start with milestones right to give a simple definition of a milestone it's easy to just google it <laughs> And you'll get a response like a significant stage or event in the development of something, right? This is kind of vague, but I, I'm guessing you're familiar with the term milestone, so it doesn't require much explanation. But what does this mean for a SaaS product, right? So a milestone for a SaaS is a point stage in the user journey that the user needs to reach actually before you, they can move forward. Uh, here at User Pilot, we define this. Uh, user journey through this, let's say, seven main steps. They need to reach a home moment, activate it, select it. We'll go into this a bit uh, later. But what I want you to understand is that these uh, milestones will be different uh, depending on your product pretty much and what you want your users to do. To briefly explain what a milestone is, think of it as a sequence of or steps of touch points that actually help the user to reach a goal, right? For example, if you want to withdraw money from an ATM, you actually have to insert the card to select the language, not to mention you actually have to go to an ATM. That's a different step. You have to get out of your house, right? So think of these moments and each moment, a sequence of these moments is actually a milestone. Milestone is what you define to be important in your journey. For example, if I want to go and uh, eat at a restaurant and I want to tip the waiter, an important milestone will be to actually go and get the cash, right? Because I can't tip the waiter before going to the ATM. And what about in SaaS? I have here a great example. Your users can't actually upgrade or will not upgrade their plan or buy an add-on or something unless it's relevant for them. Relevant means they have to take key actions before doing that. Here's an example from Loom, which prompts you to create an account, then download Loom, then record the video, share your video, get a view. Like you need to get through these steps in a sequence before you, they actually ask you to, hey, give us money, right? Upgrade to an account, to a paid account. Here are the futures that are gonna be valuable. No, they have to let you actually experience the value first. Uh, here's a milestone example from a freemium account because if you remember, I mentioned that freemium, uh, when we're doing account expansion, we need to consider freemium accounts as well. So Slack actually hits a milestone, puts a milestone on when people actually send and receive 10K messages, because that's their uh, freemium account limit, right? So you can think of a milestone, an important milestone, if you have a freemium plan, to actually track when users hit their plan limitations, right? Because that's the perfect moment to tell them, hey, you've seen the value, you've seen what we can deliver, now it's time to upgrade. Okay, so what about a user journey? The user journey is actually the path a user takes towards getting their job done and relieving the pain. To put this more into context, I wanna give you an example of user pilot customers who don't actually build, use the tool to build uh, I don't know, beautiful models like the ones you see everywhere, right? They use it to drive growth. They have a different purpose. They have a job to be done. Maybe you're here because you wanna know how to drive account expansion, right? That's your job. 
But in the same time, they're trying to avoid the pain of building rigid models by coding, right? The old fashioned way you code something, it's there, it sticks there. If you want to make any changes, if there's a typo or if you want to, I don't know, just <laughs> uh, shut it up off because it's not working or you want to do an A-B test, right? You need to depend on your developer. So that's a very rigid way. So that's a pain. That's the pain we are talking here. So you need to understand what's in it for your user what's their job to be done, what they're trying to do by using your tool, and what's their pain. Because as you see in Zoom saying, you lost access to something or you won't be able to do a, a different thing that might be hitting a nerve, right? It might be going on to my pain. Moving forward, this is moving so slowly. I'm so sorry if there's delay in this presentation. So user journey and milestones. To put it all together, pretty much milestone sequences build up to a user journey, right? I mentioned we're going to talk about this in more detail. So uh, how we describe it as a user pilot, these are pretty much important milestones that we want our users to go through, right? The aha moment, the moment when they actually think, hey, this tool might actually be worth it, my time. I might check it out. Or hmm, somebody told me something that they achieved to do with this, and I have that aha moment. Hmm, maybe I need that as well, right? That's just the feeling, but we also want them to actually experience it. And uh, we define that by the activation stage, when they actually go inside the tool, try it, use it, and that aha moment actually uh, transforms into something palpable, something they experience. Then they might decide to select the tool. Maybe they were testing multiple ones, right? To see which one actually gets the job done and in the easiest possible way. And then they pay for the tool and maybe it takes some time to use the tool, have repeated usage of it, but they are on a basic plan. They are just using some of the features. At some point, while their need changes or they become more advanced, they start using the advanced features and at some point they became advocates. So this is a basic, uh, basic milestones that you might want to track in your uh, user journey. And uh, why you, I'm mentioning this in here, because when we do account expansion or word of mouth, we're usually trying to target users who are in the pro or advocate stage, right? Because somebody who's not an advocate, it's not going to spend time to actually leave a, a in-depth review, right? We might ask a pro user to give us, I don't know, a rate, maybe, on a scale to one to five, something uh, something slightly difficult or a testimonial, or maybe ask them to participate in a case study. But if you actually want to get a more in-depth review and in SaaS, you know that that matters because that's how people actually choose products, you will want to address a specific type of users. So that's why it's important to understand the user journey and when somebody hit specific milestones. Okay. This is not moving again. Okay, why is this important? Not just because you want to know when everybody is, but milestones also help you avoid clutter, let's put it, right? You don't want to trigger three different models plus a chatbot or everything else when somebody is just trying to read one article on your website. You also don't want to, oh, this is annoying. You pretty much don't want to interrupt the user journey and what the user is actually doing in your problem, in your product. Here's the example of what being contextual means and what not to do. Like if you're asking a user to give you an MPS score, don't ask the user to actually do a separate thing in the same time. And all, both of this while they were actually trying to edit an article. This is an example from Story Chief, which is a blog article, blog editor, whatever you want to call it. And if you're actually writing your blog post or your article and you see two pop-ups that have nothing to do with what you're doing and the stage in the journey or in anything, those messages are rele relevant for you. And it's, it might cause frustration. So you're not going to achieve any goal here. So what's the answer to avoiding this clutter and interrupting users? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pretty much exit this uh, full screen because obviously it's not working. And I'm going to continue the presentation like this because I think it's easier. 
I hope you can see. But uh, I was saying, how can we avoid that clutter and uh, make our message more contextual? And that's about uh, <clears throat> understanding, that's through segmentation, right? Uh, it's about understanding where the user is in the journey and segmenting our user base and deliver our message at the right time. Because pretty much segmentation makes your message to be contextual, specific, and relevant. And all this relevancy leads to things like the customer thinking they had you read my mind. Check out this uh, Loom again. I know I mentioned Loom a lot, but they have really clever messages. This is a message they send me right after I recorded the video telling me to, hey, maybe you want to try out a feature that removes your ums hmms, and pauses, right? It's a beta product right now, but it's a premium, it's a premium uh, version of it. It's a premium feature, but I probably need to try, to try it out the, at a specific moment in my journey, right? Which is exactly what I needed it. I'm going to let you guess if I tried it or not. My videos are still like this, but <laughs> I want to point out the relevancy of the uh, their message. So now let's move on to the part you're actually waiting for, how to actually build these messages. So today we're going to build and trigger an in-app model, like similar to the ones you've seen today. I'm going to show you how easy it is to create it in user pilot, but then uh, you can just let your imagination flow. And after you build your milestones in your journey, you can identify the perfect moments when you should send up a message like that, and you can try and set it up in user pilot. By now you should have received an email with uh, a trial account, like a link to registering a trial account. If you haven't, please reach back to me and I'll definitely gonna send you the link. You can try out user pilot for free in your product and you can see how easy it is to actually build this. We're gonna briefly go over defining the milestones and goals and building a segment because this is what we're gonna use to trigger the model. And uh, I'm not gonna be able to go into a lot of details here because this is a live account where I'm going to show you the information. So I'm just going to briefly show you how to build it, but you're going to have to use your own data to actually get to build something. Okay, before you get to use this on your own, I would prompt you to think of when should I trigger an update message? This will be your milestones and your segmentation. What actions did the user do before getting there, right? Where are they in the journey? What do I want the user to do when they see my message? Because if you just pop a message that's beautiful and not tell the user what you actually want them to do and take them there, your message is not going to have any effect, right? So let's build. This is how user pilot interface is actually going to look. We're going to build a goal. At least I'm going to show you how. We're then going to look over segments and we're then going to build something, a model, which is going to look pretty much like this. I'm going to show you the settings and how to trigger it but I can't actually go into more than that. Okay, so let's go into user pilot dashboard. And we're first gonna go over goals and segments. As you can see, user pilot has multiple layers here. Uh, it's in the people layer, you actually can see all your users. You can select multiple identifications for Security reasons, I've hidden some uh, details here because this is a live account. So you can't actually see everything in here, but you have your users here. Users means you can create segments. All of your users are here. You can either have new signups active. You can call this whatever you want. As you can see, I previously built something in here, but for the purpose of this, I'm gonna show you how to actually build something. It's just about adding conditions, right? And in user pilot, you can build a segment based on multiple conditions. It can be user identification, like ID, name, email, sign up, or everything that you actually send to user pilot to uh, the code you actually install on your software. You can also use company identification. This might be things you defined. You can build a segment inside of the segment and my personal favorite one, okay, you can build obviously based on NPS because user pilot has an NPS uh, capability as well. But my most used one could be custom events. These are something that you actually set up and you send the data here, or if we use integrations with uh, tools like uh, Mixpanel, for example, where we can actually get all your data. So as you see, I have created some custom events in this account. These will be, are going to be related to your account. 
are not going to be the same. You have to define what events you wanted here. But what's important that you can think of these events as the touch points I mentioned in the presentation earlier. So let's say you have three touch points. You will have to add three customer, uh, customer, custom events. Sorry. OK, apart from other things you want, this is how what you're going to use to actually tell user pilot that this segment is, I don't know, your pro users maybe, right? You can just trigger by NPS, create a segment of NPS customers who answered nine or 10 and consider those your power users. Maybe you also want to say that they've used the feature multiple times and that's gonna be a criteria because when we trigger messages for uh, word of mouth, for example, as I mentioned, you must think of users that actually use your product. So think of what are those uh, capabilities and then trigger build a segment so you can trigger it to them especially uh we have also features and goals goals is something i mentioned you pretty much define when somebody has reached <laughs> a point and uh, the purpose of goals is that you can track people actually reaching the activation goal or doing something in your app but it's also you can as you will see you can build uh, in-app flows and messages that actually are targeted to for the user to achieve the goal. And user pilot can track this and you can do any testing. There's a lot of important parts that we're not going to be able to get into all of this today. But uh, I prompt you to reach out to our customer success team because they will be more than happy to help you with this and give you more information. OK, so how do you actually build a goal? This is very simple. You pretty much like creating the segment. You give it a name. I'm just going to put test here so I know I can delete it after, <laughs> right? And exactly the way you build segments, you have the same tools here, right? You might want somebody to reach specific uh, points to do some certain actions, but I'm not going to get into much detail here because the data you have in here will depend on your uh, users. What I want to show you is this uh, features thing features thing, <laughs> it's a features feature pretty much. It lets you to tag an element of the UI. You just have to tell them on which uh, URL you want to tag it and you can name it. And whenever the person of user clicks on that tag element, you're gonna have data in here. So that's another way of tracking. If you don't have time to set up custom events or if your developers are busy, this is an alternative. Obviously, it's not the same as custom events because it doesn't uh, it doesn't receive server side uh, action. It's just what's happening on the UI. Okay, sorry for that. And now let's go into actually building the model. You're going to have to go into the engagement layer. And uh, a user pilot, everything that happens inside the app, we call it flows, right? I'm actually, I've built a, a model here and we're gonna look into that, but I wanna show you how to trigger this. You either click on the create new flow and insert the URL, or you simply navigate to your tool. I'm gonna use this as an example and click on the Chrome extension. The Chrome extension is gonna load the builder. In here, I'm actually building the, Okay, I should have uh, closed this before showing it to you, but you're going to see it opens the builder and you're going to have to select what you want to add, right? In our case, it's going to be a model. I've already selected this. And you're going to be presented with a feature to, with an option to actually select from a template or add this. A uh, model is very flexible. You can add images, GIFs, text, titles, uh, anything. So if I want to, Add this, I can change the text, the format, you can use your own colors, you can add emojis, pretty much everything you want. It's kind, it's uh, custom, customizable quite enough. And if you're more advanced, you can also use CSS to adjust it and make it even more beautiful. But I think you can do a good job just by using the ready to go options. What's important to understand here is that uh, you can add multiple buttons, of course. I, uh, wanted to show you an example with two buttons here. So for example, our main goal is the user to leave a review. So for this, I've actually linked an option to go to a URL. URL. As you can see, I have multiple things I can do with a model in user pilot. Go to the next stage, the uh, step can be, I don't know, show them a tooltip or trigger a different experience, trigger a flow, 
trigger a JavaScript function. Like it depends on what you're trying to achieve. In my specific case, it's going to be go to one URL. And because I want to drive word of mouth, like this is a driving word of mouth account uh, model, I'm going to send them directly to a G2 website where they can leave a review for us. Other settings is going to be like, I wanted this to be open in a different tab. I don't want to interrupt their journey if they want to do it right now. And I'm going to mark the flow as complete because I don't want this to show again, right? Second option is to add a button that remind me later. And for this button, I don't necessarily want the user to go to a URL. This is a wrong setting here. Uh, I want to dismiss the flow, right? I don't want to bother the user. But then again, I can actually create a different experience that triggers this again when based on this. Okay. You have multiple settings here. You can adjust the size. I'm not going to go into everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you actually start the trial and start building and see what you can do. The message is a pretty basic one I just written five minutes ago. I mean, before starting this call, but just use our imagination and test different ones. Once you're done, you can just go to back to navigation. You can preview the entire flow. In our case, it's just a model. This is how it's going to look, right? Leave a review. It's going to take me to the website. So what I want to do now is publish it. But don't worry, publish is not going to actually publish it live. It's going to take you back to user pilot where you can actually set the triggering uh, options. And this is where segmentation and goals come into play. Uh, of course, you have options to which domain you want to uh, trigger this and everything. I'm not going to go into much detail here because what's important to understand is uh, how do we trigger that uh, stage in the user journey when the user is ready to give us a review? Because you don't want to trigger that message to everybody, right? Not, not everybody might be happy. And if somebody is not happy, you don't want to show them that, that message. And if you remember in the in account expansion part, all of those messages were triggered after I did some sort of step inside of the tool, right? After I engaged with the tool in a specific way. Otherwise, I'm not going to get a message or when I reach specific account limitations, right? Like Slack. So you want to consider this user identification and audience based on those conditions, based on what you set up. This can be a specific segment that I just built. If I don't have a segment built, and in this case, it might be for a, a word of mouth model, I might just want to do, OK, I have this in here too, for example. I might just do MPS, for example, right? It's more than nine because I want happy users. Now I want to say that uh, user identification, let's say that they signed up, not exactly. <laughs> Uh, more than maybe 60 days. I'm not going to want to answer, ask somebody for a review. I'm sorry, my phone is calling. Oh, uh, my phone is ringing. I'm sure you can hear it. I apologize for that. So once you set up what you want to do, you can you have the option of triggering this until the goal is met, or you can show it only once. I mean, in the case of uh, this model that we just built, you want to trigger it until the goal is met. And the goal is going to be obviously, uh, well, actually, we can't do this in here. Sorry for confusing you. We can't track what happens on G2. But we can maybe trigger it only once in this case, right? And then do a separate flow for people who actually dismiss this and haven't clicked on the button. We can track something there. OK. And that's pretty much it. We're just going to publish this. And uh, to see you how it looks, I'm just going to publish this for myself. This is useful for testing. So now if I click, click publish, this is only going to be live for me because I don't want to mess up with the live platform that's going on in there. OK, so this should be live. I need to exit the. the builder here, maybe reload my app. And I should have the model. Oh, no, actually, I won't have the model because I didn't do a NPS. 
I don't know why I keep confusing you. Okay, so that was pretty much how you can use user pilot. You can build any type of models. Please use this. I have a lot of examples in this presentation, so use them. Maybe some of them will be useful for you. Uh, you're going to get these slides as well, so don't worry about it. Here is a brief reminder, like <laughs> before you start building, this is like uh, reiterating what I've already said. But remember to always ask yourself what you want your users to do, when and who, and use the powers of segmentation to actually deliver contextual messages, because that's, gonna, that's what's going to bring you the most results. And also, I mentioned testing. We have also other workshops. We had some workshops uh, during Product Drive that were about uh, A-B testing and experimentations. So if you're interested in that, just send me an email or contact us on uh, user pilot and ask for those because we can definitely send you those recording as well. Oops, that's a mistake. And that's it. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you have some inspiration now on what you can build and that you're eager to actually go ahead and try to build it in user pilot. And please get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you. Hey, bye bye.